Hey guys, Adam here from South Park Blade Comics. Back again with another new comic book day review video. New comic book day was yesterday. Today is Thursday. I was able to pick up my books today. So, uh, we'll hop right into it. Here we have both my pick of the week and something special else that I picked up today from the shop. And those will show later. First up from Dynamite Comics, we have <clears throat> Vampirella Valentine's Day Special 2022. Uh, this is just a collection of four short stories. Uh, they were pretty cute, and uh, some of them were bloody, but it is a Vampirella book, so blood is to be expected. Uh, don't have much to say about this. But it was nice to read it. It was something, something different. All right. Next up, also from Dynamite Comics, we have Draculina, issue number one. This was a great book. I enjoyed it. Um, I don't know much about the Draculina story or character, but that is uh, Vampirella's, uh, let's say, little sister. And... Uh, basically, she is two different people. She is, um, she goes by a nickname, uh, called, uh, I believe, uh, Key West, I think. Not, not sure, I'm gonna have to open it up and look again. Um, so, and then she has a, uh, then she has her, uh, little girl, uh, persona who also has a name but uh, forgot that name too. Um, so basically what's happening is Draculina is two people. Her younger self wakes up next to a um, a goer and uh, he's been drained of his blood uh, because her, her other self uh, kind of drained him the previous night of blood. And uh, basically they're trying to kill each other. There are some characters from uh, what I assume is Ramparella and other things in the vamp verse in this book. Um, but I enjoyed it. This is a fantastic piece of cover. So yeah, Draculina. Good read. I'm glad to be adding more Dynamite Comics to my pull list because they're actually really, really good. All right, uh, next up is Mighty Morphin number 16 from Boom Studios. The Altarian War uh, reaches its uh, climax with a fierce battle between uh, Lord Zed, Zordon, and Zephyr. And uh, it's a very, very intense battle. Uh, a lot of history is thrown out in here. We find out why it's like this, and uh, they talk about revenge and all that sort of stuff. It was a uh, rather interesting read. Uh, I'm still totally lost, uh, but that's because I'm not reading Power Rangers anymore because I kind of got tired of that uh, book, but I might have to go pick up the trades again. But this has been good. And um, yeah, I, I, there's really not much else to say. I read it and I kind of forgot what it was all about. <laughs> Other than uh, issue 17 looks like it's gonna be good. All right, this one is the facsimile, keyword facsimile edition of Edge of Spider-Verse, Gwen Stacy, Spider-Woman. This is how she became uh, Spider Gwen, this is her first story, her first appearance, first everything. But this is not the original. The original has the barcode in another place, and I believe it's uh, cheaper as well. Well, it was cheaper at the time when it came out in, uh, I guess, 2012, 2013. Because uh, right now, raw copies go for uh, silly money. But this is Gwen Stacy's um, origin story of 
how she became Spider Gwen, and uh, yeah, and it also shows uh, Peter Parker uh, transforming into Lizard and dying. Uh, but it was really good, so I can see why this was super popular at the time and why it's still popular. Um, glad to have this in the collection. It might get graded. I'm not sure. All right, continuing with uh, Marvel Comics, we have uh, Crimson Reigns, Star Wars, Darth Vader. Uh, Padme's Handmaiden is once again back in the book, in the story. And the story goes is starting to go back to how, why it was so, so good in issues one through six. Um, so basically, uh, Vader is on a quest to... Uh, to find all Crimson Rain infiltrators within the Empire. And he has a list. And the Handmaiden is also uh, chasing after Vader because she just wants to kill him. Um, so very, very good story. I don't want to spoil it, but it was an absolute joy to read. So I'm glad that Darth Vader is regaining some of that. Uh, Awesome strain, great fight scenes, great story build up. I like it. <clears throat> All right, next up is from DC Batman Catwoman. This is Black Label, DC's Black Label, issue number 10. Uh, here we see a big fight between Joker and Catwoman that takes place in uh, the past, modern. And the resulting consequences in the future uh, between Helena, Wayne, and Selena Kyle. Uh, it was very interesting because uh, Joker is telling Catwoman that she's only just a villain, she's just like him, and the Joker and Catwoman is telling the Joker that you're saying you know exactly what you're doing, why you're doing it, you know your motivations, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and. It's an all-out brawl throughout uh, this uh, story. So this has been good. Um, probably when all 12 issues are out, I will probably read all 12 again so I better understand uh, the story. So yeah, Batman and Catwoman. All right, next up is still DC is uh, Batman Detective Comics, issue 1052. This has been a fantastic weekly story. It's an amazing, it's amazing. The artwork has been consistent throughout all issues. The story pacing has been good. And it's starting to make a lot of sense of what's going on in Arkham Tower. Uh, Psycho Pirate is the one who is uh, keeping the peace in Arkham Tower so Dr. Ware can get the money and uh, continue his uh, con scheme with uh, the drug Num. Uh, there's a huge fight. Uh, so Dr. Psycho, his hold is breaking and it does break. And basically what happens is the prisoners all fight. Then Dr. Psycho regains his um, control and goes forward with uh, putting them all to sleep and to forget anything and everything that happened but they know something's wrong because they all wake up wake up with bruises with the explanation being a gas leak so really awesome series awesome 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 this I feel is the flagship Batman title right now All right, and we have Batgirls, issue number three. Uh, this is, this was also a good issue. Um, basically, it is, um, we get introduced to uh, the tutor and what he's doing with um, a variation of the fear toxin and how his artwork is able to influence the masses. Uh, Stephanie Brown, Batgirl, gets dosed with it. And uh, Cassandra Kane 
also a girl, has to tell her, like, no, 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 stop, stop, stop. You're, you're, you're losing yourself. You're going mad. <clears throat> and she's able to uh, bring Stephanie back. Uh, we see a nice little fight ensue here between the tutor and the Batgirls. Um, there's mentions of uh, there's mentions of the various antagonists for the Batgirls series. We got the tutor, who looks like they're starting with. We have the uh, the Saints, which are left remnants of the Magistrate, and we also have Seer. And we also have the uh, serial killer as well. Um, so this is good. It's crazy fun. The artwork is not going to be for everyone. The story is not going to be for everyone because it is geared more towards teenagers. But I enjoy it. Um, so much so that I have, that I got cover A and I got cover B, the variant cover, and also on its way I have a 1 in 25 Valentine's Day cover as well coming uh, whenever that ships. So yeah, Batgirls number 3, still a good series. I enjoy it. And for my pick of the week, it is going to be, oops. It is going to be Radiant Black issue number 12 from Image Comics. So here we have the origin of Radiant Pink, we'll call her. Uh, this is very much a modern day story in current times. Uh, Radiant Pink is a streamer trying to make it. A uh, very popular streamer, has about a uh, thousand subs on Twitch. And uh, it goes through the struggles of what a streamer does deal with. Um, the first is the streamer does deal with some issues uh, with not eating, or if they do, it's just instant noodles and uh, energy drinks. Uh, and her grandmother or mother uh, comes in after she finishes her stream and tells her, like, hey, uh, you hungry? And of course, she's like, no, nah, not really. But the grandmother or mother's like, eat. You need to eat to keep your energy up. And she accepts, and the grandmother leaves her with uh, this, like, you know, you really should spend some more time outside, outdoors. Take a day for yourself. Because uh, eventually things will break on you. And that's exactly what happens. Her microphone gets broken by her cat. How many streamers out there have had their microphones or any other streaming equipment destroyed by their pets? I'd like to know. Uh, leave a comment down below. And of course, it was right before she was supposed to start a subathon, a 12 hour subathon. So she goes to Best Buy to get a mic. However, the, the gentleman she meets there uh, tells her, it's like, hey, we're out of mics. We don't have any. She's like, oh, it's like, you sure you don't have any in the bag? What about headphones? Anything like that? Headphones with a mic? And he's like, nope, last one sold earlier today. So, and he was telling, like, telling her, it's like, hey, everyone wants to be a streamer these days. They want to be a YouTuber, an influencer. And in a way, uh, that is true, but it's very, but not everyone wants that. And he also tells her, like, hey, I understand how frustrating it is, but you should really, really uh, take, take the day for yourself. And so she does. She tweets out that she's going to push back the subathon and, uh, Basically, she, uh, after she does that, all the negative comments start to come in, which does hurt her self, ex her, her self esteem and self worth. And uh, all this is coming in when she's trying to sit down having a uh, snack and a coffee with her uh, girlfriend. Uh, so, and the girlfriend was like, hey, 
uh, being um, being what a lot of people, what some people are like, where she's like, hey, you should, uh, what I'm doing, saying, I guess she was studying uh, to be a doctor or a nurse or a psychologist, says like, hey, at least what I'm doing matters. Basically saying that her being a streamer doesn't matter. It's like, and of course that's the wrong thing to say. Uh, streaming helps a lot of people, it provides entertainment. And she runs back to Best Buy and really, really asks if there's any sort of alternatives and the same person's like, hey, you're back early, but I want to show you something. And that's where she finds her radiant pink. And it just evolves from there. So this was a fantastic story. Um, highly recommend it. You could, you could pick this issue up, just this issue, and just read this. And uh, I think you would enjoy it. So that is my pick of the week. And something special that I got today from the comic shop, because they still have some, is I got the uh, Gleason design variant of Queen Goblin for AS, for the Amazing Spider-Man issue 88. Uh, basically this issue is the first full appearance of Queen Goblin. Uh, we'll see if she takes off, and according to both my comic shop owner and another customer that was in there, uh, this cover is a sought after cover still. So, who knows, it might go up in value. I'm probably gonna send it out for um, pressing and grading uh, this weekend, just so I have it. You never know. Uh, but anyways, guys, thank you for watching. If you like this content, uh, leave, uh, give it a like, uh, leave a comment down below. What did you read this week? Um, and yeah, uh, there's some links down in the description below. Uh, feel free to use those to help support the stream. And of course, if you want to be first to my content, there's always a notification bell in the upper right hand corner. And of course, hitting the subscribe button, I am ever thankful for anyone that subscribes to my content. Uh, that'll be all for tonight, guys and gals. Thank you for watching, and y'all have a good night. Bye-bye.